Today we're going to look at the rewarding work of leisure. Our big goal is happiness in this life and heaven in the next. To achieve this, we need to stay close to God throughout each day. But how do we do that while living in the real world with all of its challenges and distractions? Growing our interior life through Christian mental prayer is the answer. This podcast mines the riches of the greatest spiritual tradition on earth so we can grow in holiness together. I'm Steve Smith. Thank you for joining me for Pearls of the Interior Life. Welcome to this episode of Pearls of the Interior Life. Thank you, as always, for making this time for the Lord. I'm very glad to be here and be a part of that with summertime here, vacation time uh, here for, for many of us and for most people. You know, it's summertime, just kind of naturally we take things down a notch. Even if we're not formally going on vacation somewhere, we kind of find those times just to kick back a little bit. And that brings us to the topic of leisure. What is the point of leisure? Let's start at it this way, because, you know, I think you have a sense of where this is going, but it's worth looking a little bit deeper. We're certainly going to turn to the work of Professor um, Joseph Piper, Joseph Pieper. Everyone pronounces that one differently. My name is Smith. I'm not going to try to get it right. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to butcher his name no matter what. Um, he has a, a number of, of really marvelous reflections on this, certainly his um, groundbreaking work, Leisure as the Basis for Culture, but many other essays besides. He was the one to really look at this carefully. But let me ask a question. When was the last time you were perfectly yourself, completely yourself, 100% you, in the moment, in that very dynamic zone, that, that place where we're in the moment, we're, we're taking everything in at the same time, we're, we're detached from it. We're just perfectly present in that moment. And if we talked about this a little bit uh, a couple of weeks ago, that often when that happens is actually when we're in kind of a crisis situation and we just act and everything else is put out of our mind, something like that. But, but in all circumstances, we don't want it just to be in a crisis, obviously. So when was that? And and if you think hard about it, this is where it becomes a little tricky. And it's not just those moments that, yes, you know, that was, it was such a nice weekend. You know, we just came off the 4th of July weekend, um, off an extra day of holiday in there. Yeah, it was just a nice relaxing time. Okay. But to what extent were we completely, again, present in the moment, not futilely worrying about the, the future and, and arranging things the way we want them, not hopelessly fretting over some past thing. Maybe we're going to see some family member or someone and then there's a wound there and, uh, you know, if only it wasn't for that. Or even just being distracted. Yeah, by the superfluous memories, daydreams, yeah, just kind of empty diversions, yeah, entertainment in the moment. In short, there may be many times when we're not actually doing work and yeah, being productively occupied as we think about it, but that doesn't mean that we are at rest. In fact, most of the world these days, you know, we think of leisure being at rest as simply not doing work, you know, but no, that's like, it's not even a photo negative. That's the, the glass half empty view of things, the true virtue of leisure is perhaps best captured by this from scripture. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Catch that. Be still. It's an affirmative command, not a negative. It is an affirmative. Be still. It's not just stop working and know that I am God or Stop looking at your soul sucking device and know that I am God. Stop talking and know that I am God. Stop planning about the future and know that I am God. It's none of those things. It's not what you don't do. It is what you should be. He tells us, be still. But again, it's not what we shouldn't be doing. It is what we become. 
And so this is another subtlety to it. It's not just be still as in be quiet or be patient. Yeah, you know, just kind of a characteristic of our behavior in the moment. No, 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 it, it is much different. It is a different meaning of be and become. It is meant to become stillness, to change our nature. If you go to med school and, and study hard long enough, you become a doctor. If you practice hard at a sport, you become an athlete. If you pledge your life to someone and join your life to them in the sacrament of holy matrimony, you become a spouse. I'm a pianist. I had to study at that. You become a pianist. You become an artist. I might have had just whatever innate skills, not many, but whatever innate skills I had for piano, I had. But to actually become a pianist, to be have it just flow naturally, took just years and years of practice, of study, of tuning my ear, getting the hand and eye coordinated, and so forth. We, we spend time in these things. We devote ourselves to them. We, we form our nature around them to a certain extent. Then we become these different aspects of our nature that we've grown into. Well, what happens when we spend time in the presence of God? God, who is pure being, he tells us, I am, I am being itself. I am always perfectly myself. I'm never not myself. I'm never taken out of the moment. But when we spend time in his presence, we become more like him. We become still. This stillness, it's talking about an interior stillness. Yes, it can very much be associated with exterior stillness, with rest, with leisure. But what comes of that, what the fruit of that, is an interior stillness, an interior quietude, an interior silence. Uh, the, the example par excellence is always Christ in his passion, especially at the height of all of the public chaos around him when he's in Pilate's kangaroo court. And we've talked about this before, Pilate, he's darting in and out of his chambers. And the crowd is ranging from everything from his innermost followers abandoning him to the rest of the crowd calling for his blood. In the center of that, though, is Christ, perfectly at peace, perfectly in control. It is Christ being perfectly still, perfectly present in that moment. How do we get there? How do we get to that kind of interiority? that kind of stillness, that kind of communion with God, always in the present moment. And that's what we're getting at here. Certainly in a negative circumstance, we want that in every circumstance, but we know we're never going to be that much tested as Christ was, but we'll, we're certainly going to get our taste of it in this life, especially the closer we, we draw to Christ. We know the persecutions, the trials, the crosses will come. And so, we're, we're always building up when we're building our reserve for that, but also in all of the other aspects of life. You know, we always want to be perfectly present, perfectly present with God, per perfectly present with people he places before us. That is being still and knowing that I am God. That is becoming stillness itself. So it literally becomes our nature. That is the virtue of leisure. That is what leisure is all about. This is an excellent summary from Michael Naughton in his book, Getting Work Right, which is really a fine kind of survey and encapsulation, really, of all of Joseph Piper's teaching on leisure. Here's how he, he ties it all together. Leisure is only possible when people are at one with themselves this is only possible when they understand what is the meaning for their lives, can celebrate real goodness, and can see God's meaning and vocation for them. This is attained through leisure, most perfectly through worship. Hence, work becomes perfected in the perfection of leisure. 
Authentic leisure enables people to see how work is good, just as God on the seventh day looked at his work and said, it is good. Benedict XVI explains this connection by stating, the biblical teaching on work finds its coronation in the commandment to rest. To rest in God is not to escape one's work, but rather an invitation to live out our work in a real way as a consequence of a light which allows one to appreciate that this existence has divine dimensions which previously had been hidden. There we have it. <laughs> becoming one with ourselves, becoming one with God. Some might say growing into our true self. And so that we were experiencing that in all circumstances, yes, in times of tranquility, but also when the storms arise, how do we do that? That is the school of leisure. That is the school of mental prayer. How do we practice things? We don't start with the most challenging thing. First, we're learning piano. We don't start with Rachmaninoff or Chopin. We, we start with chopsticks or something like that. Where do we practice leisure? On vacation. You know, we do find those times of tranquility, and that is the time to learn to be completely present, not to be distracted with all kinds of things, to be always aware of God before us and who he's putting before us to share him with to be grateful, to recognize him in the simplicity of a sunrise and a sunset, of, of sharing a good conversation with someone. We grow in to becoming still when we're in those moments of tranquility, and then we carry that with us into all the rest of our life. So here is wishing you moments of leisure now as we come into the height of summer and wishing you to become stillness and I look forward to being with you again.